Our first reading today is the beginning of a story of redemption. It is about the man named Saul who persecuted the disciples of Jesus and tried to destroy the church. How he had caused the Christians in Jerusalem to be scattered throughout Judea and Samaria and other countries abroad. Ironically, you know, it was this persecution that paved the way for the earliest missions, like the one done by Philip in our first reading in Samaria. How this murderous man would later be converted from Saul the persecutor to Paul, the propagator of the Christian faith among the Gentiles, and how St. Paul's own life story would become a story of redemption, an example of what I call God writing straight with crooked lines. For the past few days now, I have been hearing about true stories of redemption. Two of them had to do with people who dared to come out and retract the false testimonies that they had made earlier. Testimonies that kept Senator Laila de Lima in jail for the past five years now for allegedly accepting campaign money from illegal drug lords. Can you imagine all the injustice and humiliation that she had been submitted to only to be told now by two of the people who had testified against her? Sorry ho. Walang katotohanan ng lahat ng sinabi namin laban sa inyo. We were just forced by powerful people to do it. And we did it because we were afraid of the possible consequences for our loved ones. We hope you can forgive us. Grabe, no? After five years in jail? The other two stories were just as heart-wrenching. One had to do with a daughter who discovered through her own research that her father was indeed a criminal who had caused a lot of suffering on many martial law victims during the time of the dictatorship. This woman had been raised in luxury in a mansion in Forbes Park and then educated outside the country. It was like she had lived a shielded life inside the bubble and she was kept totally unaware of her father's role in the crimes committed by the dictatorship that also enriched her own family. When she learned the truth, her conscience was so stricken, she publicly apologized, publicly expressed remorse, and apologized to the victims for the sins of her late father. The other one was the story of a son who disowned his own mother, a very famous former journalist na naging politiko for entering into a political alliance with politicians she call, he calls fascists. Ang sabi niya dun sa post niya, for weeks I have been crying screaming every day until I spat out blood. The decision my mother made is so profoundly unthinkable, unconscionable, 
unforgivable. Wow. For a son to say that about his mother's decision, I feel so sorry for both of them. I hope they are at least able to distinguish between the actions and the persons of their loved ones. You know, yung classic expression nating mga Kristiyano, hate the sin but love the sinner nevertheless. Kahapon nagpost din ako ng reflection in which I commended the two men yung si Espinosa and Ragos, who retracted their false testimonies, I commended them for doing the right thing, for finding the courage to set themselves free from what I call the unbearable weight of conscience. Siguro hindi na sila nakakatulong. Ikaw ba naman ang gumawa? ng kasinungalingan na magiging sanhi ng pagkakakulong ng isang senadora ng limang taon. Wow! Well, in my post, I said, our faith holds on to a stubborn belief in a merciful God. No one is beyond redemption for as long as they are willing to admit their wrongdoings, express remorse, and make concrete acts of reparation for them. Pero, binanggit ko rin yung sinasabi ng banal na kasulatan tungkol dun sa mga hindi umaamin ng kabuktutang pinagagawa nila Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. And there we read, I, the Lord your God, will inflict punishment for their wickedness, the wickedness of the parents on the children of those who hate me down to the third and the fourth generation. Mahabahabang punishment yan down to the third and the fourth generation. And if you belong to that family, wow, what a dreadful thought this must be for their children and their children's children. Pero, meron namang mabuting balita. The succeeding generations are not doomed to the sins of their ancestors. They have the choice to break the spell of wickedness in their own generation by acknowledging the sins of the previous generation and vowing, promising not to perpetuate them. In our Gospel reading, I hear an echo of this good news when Jesus says, I will not reject anyone who comes to me because I came down to do the will of the one who sent me. And the will of the one who sent me is that I should not lose anything or maybe anybody of what he gave me but that I should raise it on the last day. And for that, he had to suffer and die on the cross. It is what Jesus' mission is all about. The mission of the redemption of sinners.